Hi, I'm Anna. I'm a lecturer in forensic chemistry at the University of Central Lancashire. And my name's Paul Langton and I'm a lecturer in forensic science at UCLan. And we're going to talk about our project, which has been to develop videos for using in the lab and before the lab to increase lab confidence and reduce cognitive load in our forensic science particles. So to give you an idea of context, so this is a photo of one of our labs. So as you can see, it's a big lab. It's really different from the setup that students will have had before in school and colleges. And when they come in, it's quite overwhelming for them at the start because we've got a set way that they have to come in and they are doing new module content because in first year they're doing forensic science, chemistry, biology and anthropology and they won't have done them all before. They'll have done some, but they won't have had all of them. And to help with this, we've done what we'd really term lab in a tray. So they get a tray with all the apparatus that they're going to need for that practical. And the technicians will have set some things up and put stuff together. And they had a written protocol. So they've got written instructions from all of the lab, which was available before the labs. And as you can see in the picture, we give them, we used to give them written SOPs. So they've got the written instructions for how to use a melting point apparatus. So as you can see with all this information, uh, students, you know, this slide kind of like kind of information overload for some students um, and some sums up the majority of how people were feeling. So we kind of took a scientific approach to this to see if, uh, we can like uh, reduce this cognitive kind of overload of students because these words like vortex and um, centrifuge and they might not be familiar because some of our students uh, have you know different backgrounds to science you know they come from a different kind of uh, uh, kind of entrance points don't they so um, we kind of took uh, the theory of uh, John Sweller uh, the cognitive load theory and we wanted to kind of uh, produce some videos so they could uh, you know, avoid all this like overload this information and to reduce the overload. And um, the, the kind of aim for these videos was to try and take advantage of the audio and visual aspects uh, and turn to the working memory to kind of uh, reduce it. And that, you know, that's the purpose of this kind of these videos is to stop all this overload and to re um, and to, to take a bit of take a bit of pressure off them, really, so they can actually you know, watch these videos. And um, as a course team, we restructured in 2020. So we had a radical periodic course review, which led to a very different new course structure. We reallocated who the module leaders were. We were looking at having new range of assessments and a redesign of really all of the module content so that our first year currently so this is for forensic science is the double module of crime scene science they have academic skills bodies of evidence which is mainly anthropology forensic lab analysis that i'm going to talk a lot more about and forensic scientific principles and the last two are the chemistry and biology content so we've got a lab module and a theory module so for forensic lab analysis this is a practical module it's all the introductory chemistry and biology it links to the theory module and when we were designing this we were putting three modules into two from our old first year structure so we were really looking at what's needed and what's relevant to bring them from their level three entry qualifications to be able to do year two chemistry and year two genetics and with the practical module we looked at the length of the practical sessions so that we now have three hour labs instead of two so they've got plenty of time to do everything and it doesn't feel rushed we introduced workshops so that there's minimal instruction in the lab they've got an hour workshop before each lab where we talk about and go through what the content is we have put lectures in at key points so this is mainly for things like how to do the assessment 
um, and things like that. We've also got pre-lab activities. So this is a screen grab from my Blackboard. So we have a pre-lab quiz that they need to do so that they've engaged with the lab script before they come to the lab. We've got folders for simulations, which we'll talk about in a bit. And we've got folders of videos so that they can watch this all before the lab and they've got access if they want to look at it in the lab. And we've also got in-lab support. So now all labs are double staffed, whether it's two staff members or a staff member and a postgraduate demonstrator. So on the uh, Forensic Science Year 2 course, uh, these are the following modules. So we have Forensic Casework, uh, which I'll talk about on the next slide. We have Professional Practice, Research for Forensic Investigations and Major Crimes. Then top four are core modules they have to do. And then the following three, Molecular Biology, Forensic Chemical Analysis and Anthropology are all optional uh, modules. But as you can see, they, they are quite heavily practical based. So the ones uh, highlighted are you know, pretty much what the videos, what we've done for them ones. Um, so the ones I'm going to talk about now is the forensic casework, which I'm the module lead for. It's a three hour practical. Uh, it's a multidiscipline uh, forensic practicals, you know, from ballistics, documents, body fluids, uh, BPA, uh, blood pattern analysis, uh, comprised with one hour lecture a week and a three hour practical. Um, I've, again, I've took a grab shot, a snapshot and a grab shot off uh, the, my actual Blackboard page here. But it's kind of like what Anna said, a mixture of uh, pre activities of videos, simulations. And we also have a, a lab support which have uh, two staff. And for, for forensic casework, we generally have about 14 to 16 students per practical with two members of staff uh, there to, to help and assist. So the simulations that we're using are from LearnSci. So got a screen grab from one of the ones that I've been using on recrystallisation. And these are really good because students get a chance to do the procedure in a safe way at home before they've come to the lab. And these are very short activities that link to a specific procedure and then we've also got access to Labster so we've used some Labsters. I've used mainly LearnSci and some Labsters and Paul's used some LearnSci for that. So where did it all begin? So we started some videos in the summer of 2022 uh, and what we did we um, created uh, the first kind of batch of videos and with two our uh, forensic science uh, ex students who've kind of gone through the whole undergraduate program. Uh, so that they actually created it and they uh, were starred in the videos themselves. And uh, it was kind of co created with them as well. So we worked with them to see, you know, what worked best, any gaps, any any kind of practicals, which, you know, are kind of like we, we, we kind of need to look at this area. Um, they were both uh, knowledgeable about the subject material and uh, both of them had experience of like video uh, editing um, and like using like phones and like media kind of kind of platforms. And as you can see here, these are two examples of snapshots of our videos uh, from 2022, aren't it? Yeah. Yep. So we asked them, our students, how do they prefer to get information? Because whereas I think I'd probably still go to a textbook for some things, our students aren't like that. Um, they are preferring to use videos and to have videos and video clips was the top. We also said, how did they not want to get information? And what was quite surprising was podcasts came up top for not wanting away. So we also asked them, how do you prepare for the lab? And they were predominantly reading the lab script and completing the pre-lab simulations and watching the videos. Um, they weren't going off and finding their own videos, but they were watching ours and they were reviewing any lecture, lecture recordings we had that link to the practicals. Yes, 
Oh, so just, yeah, smiling. Jump. We also asked their student confidence. So uh, by watching the videos, did it increase their like confidence before they kind of turned up in the practical? And as you can see, it's overwhelmingly that, uh, you know, they felt more confident when they watched the videos and turned up for their practicals. Um, and also increased uh, overwhelmingly uh, that their understanding of the techniques, uh, once they watched the videos, they came back to us and said that they, uh, you know, they felt like they understood it a lot more. And we also asked them about what they thought of the videos. So these were what they thought of the videos that our interns had made. So we were saying, do you think the videos that we've given are more relevant than if they'd found their own videos on YouTube or if we'd shared a YouTube video or Khan Academy or some of the videos from LearnSci? And they were saying that they were more relevant if made by UCLan and they would be more relevant if they were made by the tutor. But to say, we, I think my hand is in the titration video from 2022, but we are not in them at all apart from that. And they were saying this because when they were made by UCLan, they were in the labs that they're in. It was the same kind of language that they would use because a lot of the videos they'd been finding were American with Americanized terms. So this really got us thinking that we needed to be in the videos. So this summer we again made some videos so we co-created for the content so we went back to the students in our survey in our questionnaire to say were there any gaps in what we had was there anything missing from the videos that we already had that they would like as a video and we had to, recruited two interns again that were supported by the UCLan graduate career scheme and I got matched funding from our school to pay for two posts and we got a TV production graduate and a graduate from forensic science and criminal investigation so we had a lot of technical knowledge for production and we also had technical knowledge from the forensic side and Paul and I were filmed so this is me in one of the chemistry lab setup so you can see we had a proper setup pointed at us so we had multiple cameras and we had lights focused on us. lights camera of action yeah That's it. yeah so um what we did um as you can see uh we created a, a change in our risk assessment, which enabled students also to um, able to use their phones in the labs if they followed quite a strict kind of risk assessment. So they was able to actually watch the video. So if they forgot a, a technique or they wanted to kind of do it uh, like a dual coding, like watch it and do it, watch it, do it, um, they, they, they're able to do that. Um, and as you can see on the next slide, here's just a snapshot of just some of the videos which you can watch the full versions if you like later on um, and it's really good because uh, the camera and angles as you'll see in a second you can get really up close um, different angles um, nice and clear no, and no buffering which we'll talk about in a sec uh, as you can see on that picture there we have screens in the lab so we're able to actually play the videos in actual the labs themselves and the and the students can kind of watch it do it watch it rewind it and just just master it until they kind of uh, get some kind of competency off the, off the skills yep so if we're thinking about our journey with this last summer was not a hard summer for us because we talked about what we were going to do with our interns and we sent them off and we had little in, we had input with what they were doing but day to day they were in the lab filming themselves they were carrying out the procedures and we were in a supervisory role now the equipment originally used uh, it was kind of like just your box standard cameras uh, some of them used their own kind of cameras iphones for example uh, the lighting was just a normal kind of 
uh, lighting in the lab. Uh, so that so the equipment was quite limited. And then this summer was quite hard for us. The time, the filming days were quite tough because we were days. having we were having to repeat what we were doing for the multiple takes, but also to prepare to be filmed was quite challenging because we were working with our forensic science intern to look at what the procedure was, to talk through what were the important bits that we were going to have to cover. And then we were having to explain it to our TV production graduate who didn't have a scientific background so that he was getting the right shots that we needed to show that procedure or what the reaction of what was happening so it was quite an intense project for us the quality of the production because we're quite lucky that it was a like a production kind of director um, and that's what he does uh, and the quality of the equipment you know the cameras were ex extremely expensive like specific for like film production uh, we had a, the right lighting and he had like two cameras so we could do like close-up side shots it's kind of like the BBC coming to film me, wasn't it, really? Um, he was really good at how to understand like the buffering, because in the summer, the first videos we ever did, uh, they weren't right for the right platform and we got a lot of buffering, uh, which obviously was you know quite frustrating for students, uh, depending on the uh, bro uh, broadband uh, bandwidth. Um, but he also helped us to put them on YouTube as well, like create us a YouTube uh, kind of account uh, and they run seamlessly. They don't even buffer one second. Uh, and, you know, I think that's one of the, the key thing for me that that increased the quality uh, of the videos. They're all in high definition. Uh, the writing's good because if you're on a on a bus, for example, and you don't want the volume, you can re like read them. But for an accessibility point of view, um, it's really easy and you know it kind of covers all the all the kind of range for uh, learning styles for everybody so the impact for student learning um we kind of like they're out there now uh, i've just done a fingerprint practical uh, this week and uh, it's refreshing that students are using them uh, i can see the views going up higher every day uh, but I can also see them actually using them in the lab, uh, using the risk assessment, which uh, adjustments in the risk assessment, which enables them to use them. And you can actually see them use them, carry out the technique and the feedback we get in uh, that they really it's really positive and they really like them. And uh, our next step is to evaluate this uh, next at the end of this well, next semester, isn't it? Yeah, we're so. going to evaluate it at the end of the year to see what they thought and how they're using it and so far we've been sharing it with other courses within our school and with other schools at UCLan because other people are interested in what we've done and I think the quality of our videos compared to others um, so it wasn't just us we want to thank UCLan Graduate Career Summer Internship Scheme for, and the School of Natural Sciences for the funding. Judith Smith is my co-module leader for first year and she worked with us last summer. Um, Alice and Imran were our interns in summer 22 and Tom and Dominic were our interns this summer and LAS technicians have been really helpful in making sure we've got everything that we need for filming it's quite intense wasn't it you have to make like on some days eight practical worth of kind of chemical solutions so the, the, it is proud um so you've got the qr code and you've got the web address of our youtube channel um if you've got any comments or any sort of further feedback on them we've got that link as well and any questions